It's tasty, a little bit squashy, totally delightful, and even better if toasted. My name is Rich Hindman, and I'm going to delve into the fluffy center of our latest Android offering and the new hardware that forms the latest Nexus lineup. So Android Marshmallow, numerically, it's Android 6. And for developers, that's API 23. It's the most stable, efficient, and feature-packed version of Android yet. And the first two devices to launch with the latest hotness are the Nexus 5X and Nexus 6P. The Nexus 5X is a delight built in partnership with LG. It's equipped with a 5.2-inch 1080p display, a Snapdragon 808 processor, and a 12.3-megapixel rear camera. It offers top-of-the-line performance in a compact, lightweight device. For developers, there were two new intermediate densities added in API 23, Density 360 and Density 420. And the new Nexus 5X is in that latter bucket. So for devs that are using compatible screen declaration in their manifest, you're going to need to test your app out and add the new values. The Nexus 6P, built with Huawei, rocks a 5.7-inch high-resolution AMOLED display, front-facing stereo speakers, and a 12.3-megapixel rear camera, all housed in a contoured aluminum body. I absolutely love these devices, and both have USB-C ports and fingerprint sensors. The updates in Marshmallow are primarily targeted towards improving the user experience, smoothing out install and update flows, speeding up authentication, improving battery life, adding contextually sensitive controls, and allowing applications to assist each other at a deeper level than ever before. Arguably, one of the biggest changes in M has to be the arrival of runtime permissions. While this reduces friction for install and updates, it does come with some overhead. You can no longer assume that just because your app is installed that all its stated permissions have been granted. Permissions are now granted at runtime, and users can revoke permissions on a per-app basis at any time. There are more details in Nick Butcher's video on Permissions UI. In an effort to simplify robust data backup for developers and also simplify the lives of users, Android Auto Backup ensures up to 25 megabytes of data is backed up per app. If your project targets M, backup will automatically be enabled, and there are a couple of things you should be aware of. So be sure to check out the docs and watch Matthew's video for full details. Something I'm personally very excited about, there are a number of battery optimizations in Marshmallow, but the biggest individual contributors are Doze and App Standby. If a user leaves their device unplugged and stationary for a period of time, and the screen is off, then the device is going to enter Doze mode. It's going to stay in that sleep state until the device is disturbed. By default, some restrictions apply to apps in this mode. Wake clocks may be ignored, scheduled alarms can be deferred, and network access may be disabled. But if you have good reason to wake your app, then you can do so, and Joanna Smith has just released a video explaining it all. There are new authentication and security possibilities with the addition of the fingerprint recognition APIs. With new support and ADB testing commands, you can help your users have the most secure devices possible. Maya has the full details in her video. If you want to make it easy for users to transition from your web content to your app content, App Linking lets you take control of the web content that you own, and Voitech has a video that explains it beautifully. On top of that, we have Bluetooth Styler support, text selection, context-aware pop-ups, adoptable storage, and that Assist API, which allows you to integrate with services built by other developers. Not strictly part of Marshmallow, but definitely worth mentioning, is the introduction of data binding. It's an Android Studio feature from 1.3 onwards, and it reduces the amount of code you need to write to hook up your XML layouts with your activities. See Neto's video for the lowdown. There have also been updates to the support library with a number of new libraries, including custom tabs, percentage-based layouts, recommendations, and preferences. With all the new goodness comes some goodbyes. First up, a deprecated API has been removed. Apache HTTP was deprecated a while back in favor of the more efficient HTTP URL connection, and it's been removed in Android 6. If your app or any of the libraries you use rely on it, you're going to need to make a small update to include it in your build and declare it in your build.gradle file. Even though OpenSSL was never part of the public NDK API, some apps still linked against it. And now that Android has switched from OpenSSL to boring SSL, yep, that's the name, it means that those apps will now break. If you're in this situation, you need to get testing. All the videos mentioned here are available in our Android Marshmallow playlist. So that's Android Marshmallow, something harmless and lovable that could never possibly run amok in New York and destroy us.